1865, four major events occurred. These events were the 13th Amendment, Lincoln's assassination, John Wilkes Booth's death, and the Siege of Petersburg. Every one of these events contributed to America's history greatly. Lincoln freed the slaves in the South and not the North. Lincoln did not want to free the slave states in the North. He thought he was going to lose the slave states in the North. The 13th Amendment was adopted, passed, on December 5, 1865, with Lincoln's help. This amendment entailed giving freedom to slaves. When this amendment was adopted, slavery was mostly abolished. Slavery in the North and in the South. The 13th Amendment helped many slaves get their freedom. Many abolitionists were thrilled with the news of the 13th Amendment. Our American Cousin is in the Third Act. President Lincoln and his wife Mary are watching. The back door opens with a creak. A man sneaks in without a sound. Then, with no hesitation, he pulls the trigger that is attached to a gun pointing at Lincoln's head. Lincoln's limp body falls into Mary's lap. She screams. Then all of a sudden, the man jumps onto the stage with a crash and breaks his shin. His face is in the light now. Everybody sees. It is John Wilkes Booth. Six Semper Tyrannus. These are the words Booth yells after he shoots Lincoln in the head. He quickly runs through the back door of the theater and rides off into the night. Lincoln is quickly carried to Peterson's house across the street to be cared for in the room of the War Department clerk. There are about six surgeons present in Dr. Hall's. They start to look over him to see if what actually happened. They found that the bullet has ripped through the side of his head into the left side of his brain. The wound will warn, wound him mortally. The President Lincoln died at 7.22 a.m. early the next morning of April 15, 1865. John Wilkes Booth shot Lincoln in the head while he was watching our American cousin. Jumps off the balcony and breaks his chin on the stage. Sick Semper Tyrannus. These are the words Booth yelled out of the audience. He makes a quick run for the exit and rides off into the black darkness of the night. He was halted at a night's guard position at the bridge nearby. The guard asks him what he is doing out this late. Booth replies, that he was running an errand in Washington and he was returning to his home in Beantown. The guard allows Booth to pass without any more questions. Soon after, Booth's accomplishment, accomplice, David Harold, met up with the guard and then followed Booth. They not met up, made their way to Mary Surratt's inn to get some supplies they had stashed before. They later rode off to Mudd's home, who was a doctor, they woke him up at 4 a.m. to ask about Booth's leg. Booth and Harold both slept that night, while Dr. Mudd rides to Byra Town to do some errands. He is enthralled and devastated when he hears about President Lincoln and his condition. He also heard of the attacker Booth. He quickly makes his way home and kicked the two fugitives out of his home. After riding for several days, and stopping and running from various places, Booth and Harold find their way to Garrett Farm, a tobacco growing farm. Then they his within the barn and hoped to be not located. The 16th New York Cavalry soon found them in the barn and they were trapped. Harold claimed his innocence and ran out of the barn. But Booth stayed behind the face, the, the cavalry. Then suddenly from behind someone lights the barn hay ablaze, and the fire rapidly spreads throughout the structure of the barn. Booth runs towards the fire, but then back away. All of the sudden, a shot rings, and, out of, and Booth falls. Paralyzed, the end of his run is over. The assassin of Abraham Lincoln has been found caught and killed.
Dear mother and friends, one and all, gladly I take my pen to inform you that I am through God's mercy yet alive and well, although very weary, as surely you will observe my, by my nervous hand. Yesterday I was with my regiment engaged in a severe battle in front of our lines. The conflict was terrible for a time, but God was pleased to grant us into its success. The rebels began the fray at an early hour yesterday morning by charging and taking two forts in front of the Ninth Corps, which we retook at about 7 o'clock together with about 1,500 prisoners. 300 of whom threw down their arms and came in after being defeated. Our division was hurried to the support of the Ninth Corps, but when we got to the fields of action, our men had taken back the forts. We then marched back past our camp about a half mile and halted in the line of battle with orders not to go into camp at any rate, for the 2nd and 3rd Division, 2nd Corps, was going to charge and we had to support them. We moved in column by the flank until we was beyond our picket line and then formed line of battle and went at the enemy with the bayonet genuine Yankee yell. The rebels stuck to their works like heroes, but Yanks was too many for them. We captured their first line entire. Perhaps a few ex escaped. Their loss in killed, I think, was greater than ours, or at least there was more left on the field. We've advanced our picket line and entrenched it about a half mile farther out than before. Our brigade captured 500 prisoners. I think about 500 was taken yesterday. Our loss was quite severe. President Lincoln and General Grant was at the front of the most the front most of the day. They came from the city point in the morning on the cars. Stop. In 1865, John Wilkes Booth and Lincoln died. The Battle of Petersburg occurred and the 13th Amendment was adopted. Lincoln got assassinated by John Wilkes Booth. Slightly after, John Wilkes Booth died. Then, the 13th Amendment was passed, and that, uh, that entailed giving freedom to all colored and, bl colored and blacks that were slaves.